I got this really pretty, I think, eyeglasses case the last time I picked up some um, glasses from the doctor. But it just looks so plain with it being just flat painted. So I decided to put a design on it. If you know me, you know that I do love doing stroke designs. And I thought I would uh, give you a couple tips on how learning to do strokes or, or practicing your strokes even helps you with all the rest of your painting. First, I just want to let you know that I got the pattern for this design in a book of line drawings that I have. I picked this up many, many years ago, and you can see um, I've got notes in here, and it's pretty beat up because I use this book all the time, and it just has a lot of period line drawings in it. Uh, sometimes, in fact, here's the one that, that I used on the glasses case. This one actually is from a piece of painted tinware done in New York in about 1790. And since I love painting on tinware, I thought it was kind of appropriate, even though the glasses case isn't tin. But again, I just page through this book, and many times I'm inspired to paint something just by looking at the designs in here. All it is is line drawings, and then I just add my, my paints to it, my color to it, to make it come alive. So again, um, I did the stroke design on here. You can do either the whole thing, or you could even leave parts of it out. I used the um, DecoArt Stylin paints. If you're not familiar with them, this is what they look like. They come in, in a kind of a limited amount of colors, so I did have to do some brush mixing, but I think that kind of makes it even more fun trying to come up with the colors that I really want. Um, and they are uh, especially made for fabric and canvas. Shoes work well, um, purses, things like that. So at any rate, these, these are the, the paints that I used, and you can find them on the DecoArt website. As I said, I needed to do some color mixes for the colors that I wanted for my base coat. And so even though I don't normally use a, a wet palette for my painting, since I wanted these colors to, to stay um, true to the color that I wanted, I decided to use a wet palette. And all I did was um, wet some paper towel, you can see that right here, and then wrapped it in a piece of deli wrap. You want to try to keep as much air out of there as you can to keep it wet longer. And then I use this again to do my, my mixing on here. And I already have these all mixed up for you, but I will give you the, the um, proportions as we're working. As I said, I kind of wanted to give you an idea on how practicing your stroke work will help you with all of your painting needs. So let's get started. I, I know you know how to base coat, but I'm just going to give you a little brief introduction into how I'm doing all of this. So I'm going to start with what I am calling the bud, which is in the center of the design right here. And also using the same color for the center petal of my tulip. So it's going to be the same, the same color mix which is three parts orange, I'm sorry, three parts chestnut to one part orange. I did wet my brush in my water tub and blotted it on my paper towel and, and took out a little bit more water than I normally do for base coating since I'm working on a wet palette and I'm going to pick up moisture from here. I'm loading, oh, that really it did get wet. I'm loading from the side of the puddle and pressing down. Um, I'm using a little larger brush here just so it's easier for you to see what I'm doing. On these areas, I used a number eight filbert. For what I'm working on now, I'm using a 10. But the, the um, strokes are basically the same. So again, loading it from the side of the palette pressing down to um, get rid of any ridges. I'm actually going to blot my brush on my paper towel a little bit because there's so much moisture in there. Then I'm going to come over here to my oval. And since the filbert brush has these nice rounded bristles, I'm just pressing down. 
and there's my oval. I'm leaving that top part blank because something else is going in there. I'm going to switch over to a flat brush then. I'm using just a, a number 10 shader brush. I'm going into that same color mix as I said. This is the for the center petal of the tulip. It's always easier to pull into a narrow corner than to start there. So I'm going to start on the wider corner. I'm going to stroke down and pull into that corner. Coming up this opposite direction, going into that corner. It'd be easier for me to turn my piece around, but let's just pretend I did not doing a real good job here without turning it but there you go so you're just going to again start in the wider part of the area and pull down so in four quick strokes I have that area base coated instead of sitting here and trying to paint that pull that paint in let's just work on those two areas right now while um, we have those colors out I I did move my Mm, highlight shading colors onto just my regular palette so I didn't want to pick up any of that extra moisture in my paint and brush that I would be getting on the wet palette especially with the blending so I'm going to start with my um, the, again the two areas that we just base coated actually I'm going to switch to a larger brush and this, this has probably two or three coats on it, so you need to do that. I'm going to come over here into my orange, side load about a third of the bristles into the brush, and blend out. And as always, I'm blending in the same path, instead of skipping all around my, my palette. This way I don't waste any paint or moisture. I'm going to come here to the oval start at the top and here's another um, little stroke tip doing a C stroke so I'm starting on one side of the oval I'm pressing as I'm pulling through and releasing that pressure and I'm going to walk that color down maybe a third to half of the way down and in case you you missed what I did there as far as the stroke goes let me show you here so it's starting on the chisel edge, press through, get back on the chisel edge. So I'm making a C. And then as I walk it down, I just slowly move my color down. So that's what I did on, on that oval. I'm finding the paint a little transparent, so sometimes I have to go over things more than once. And I'm going to come up here to the top of my um, center petal. I want to add some highlight in here. So I'm just touching my brush into that corner. And as I work my way down, now I'm starting to apply more pressure. And again, I'm walking this color down because I want this to kind of look like it's glowing. Walking the color down again a third to a half of the way down into that petal. I did that step twice, and so if we come down here, I'm adding a second coat of orange, and you can see how much more brilliant it's going to be once I add. That second coat to these areas and then to make it glow even more you can either keep the orange in your brush or clean it out like I just did I'm going to side load into yellow and blend out a little too much moisture there so I blotted my brush there we go let's blend that out Again, on the same path, so I'm not wasting paint or water. So I have my orange on, on this um, oval, and actually I started a little yellow up there, but let's come down to the oval. I'm going to add, start adding some yellow in here. You can see how that helps to make this area glow. 
And I will add one more coat onto here after this is dry. But let's come up here to the center petal. I already have one coat on here. So now I'm going to add a little bit more yellow and it's just gonna brighten it up. For each layer that I put on, I move that color down a little less. So my first highlight came down to about here. My second highlight with orange came down to about here. Third one, uh, first with the yellow here, and now this one's just a little bit shy of that. So we're gonna let those areas dry, and we're gonna move over to the side petals. Need to check my notes here as far as the um, color mix that I used. And I actually use this on the side petals and this little oval underneath that center bud. And for this mix, I did five parts of chestnut to one part of brick to a half orange. And then I mixed those all together and here's the color I came up with. Um, one thing I'd like to mention, if you're doing mixing, color mixing, and you start running out of the paint, before you're totally gone and you know you have a little ways to go yet and you need to mix it more, mix it up while your paint is still wet. You know, it, your acrylic paint dries a little bit darker then it looks when it's wet. So you want to make sure that you get a, as close to that original color as you can by mixing whatever is going to match your wet paint rather than the dry paint. So I'm, I'm shifting to a number 10 filbert. I wish I had a 12, which would fit into my area a little bit better. Um, again, on, on the pattern that I gave you, I used an 8 filbert. Once again, loading from the side of the puddle, nice and flat. And again, since I'm working on the wet palette and it's pretty wet, I'm just gonna blot my brush on my paper towel to get the excess out. And I'm gonna come down here to the side petals of my tulip. I'm pressing down. Kind of think comma stroke. Now with, with the Eight filbert, you should be able to get it right in there. Smash it a little bit and wiggle it a little bit when you get to the bottom, and that'll fill in the entire area. And you should be able to pull this stroke with just one stroke. Uh, another thing, too, to tell you with these strokes, I'm right handed, and for me, it's easier if I'm pulling the stroke off toward the left to push push it away from myself. Bear with me as I turn my surface over. So now again, I want to pull this stroke with the end going to my left so I can see where I'm going. So I turn my surface over and I'm pulling toward myself. Just going to pick up a tad more paint. Kind of wiggle it as I get the stroke started. I'm not turning the brush, just lifting up on the tips of the bristles, releasing pressure. And there you see I got that whole thing stroked in in one stroke. When you're doing these, you don't need to worry about filling in the whole area. You just want to get a nice stroke on this. Once again, you want to do two coats on, on these petals, two or three. Oh, and the same thing goes for this little oval down here. I didn't use um, that large brush. I, I went back, actually, on the pattern, the size that I gave you, I went down to a size 6 um, filbert and stroked it in just like I did the oval in the beginning. First this way and then that way, and you got that whole oval base coated in in just two strokes. I'm going to go back to my flat brush again and start adding some highlights to those petals. I'm going into my orange again, picking up that paint and blending out. And you see, I'm coming back to my very first place where I was and keep blending into that same path so I don't waste the paint and the moisture. I'm gonna do the same thing as I did basically on the center petal here. 
I'm going to start at the tips and walk that color down again about a third to a half of the way down onto the petal. A little too much water in there. So I blotted it on my paper towel. There, that's a little bit better. I'm walking that color down. And then on this little oval down here, doing, you, and you can switch to a smaller brush, but I'm doing a C-stroke again, so starting on the edge, pressing as I pull through, and getting some orange on the top of that petal. And then it's basically the same thing I did on the, um, oh, picked up a little yellow paint there. Uh, it's basically the same thing I did on the center petal, where I'm going to go in with um, a little more orange. So do a second coat of orange on these petals. And you can do the same thing on this little oval as well. And then I'm going to go in with my yellow. I'm going to keep a little orange in my brush this time, blending out on that same path. This is going to help mix the orange and yellow together in my brush. And once again, starting on at the very tip of those that petal. Well, you know, let's pick up a little more yellow. And this is, I should point out, one reason why I prefer to do it this way and just keep adding a little yellow to that corner of the brush rather than mixing up a puddle. Because this way I can just pick up that little bit of paint, test it on my surface. Do I like it? Yes or no? If the answer is no, cleaning up that edge. Then I just add a little bit more paint to it. So again, I'm walking the color down, but not as far as I did the first time. or I should say the second time after that second coat of orange. Let's just add a little bit onto this center petal too while we're here. So you can kind of see them together a little bit. And then up in here, you can add a little bit more yellow to the tips of those petals. Might not need as much as on the center petal with the orange. Okay, so I've got all of those areas done. Um, let's let's go over to the green. I didn't make a, a mix for the these colors as well, and for that mix, I used seven parts of yellow to one part of black. And I got a color that I would say is probably more or less like avocado in deco art, maybe just a tad darker and a little more on the yellow side um, instead of blue. Avocado has a lot of blue in it. So there's my color mix. Um, don't have my smaller filberts here, so I'm just gonna use a round brush to stroke these leaves in. And we're gonna come down here to my beginning pattern, loading the brush again in the green from the side of the puddle, pressing down. I am gonna to have to blot this brush again in my paper towel since there's a lot of moisture in there. I'm gonna come down here. This oval is the one that should be done in red, so we'll pretend that it is. Let's pretend this is my, my filbert brush. Got a little hair on there. So I'm going to start here and stroke, do one stroke here. So I'm pressing through and releasing pressure as I get to the end. And then you can just do these this little scalloped area here. Then for this little leaf underneath the oval. It's a little matter of two two strokes. Let me sh show you that. I'm going to pick up a little bit of yellow in my brush to lighten this color up a little bit. So hopefully it's going to show up a little bit better for you on this surface. So I'm going to show you a two stroke leaf here which is what we're going to do right here. So I'm going to start at the base of the leaf, press down, 
pull through, release pressure, lift up onto the tip, and then you're going to finish off that leaf right here. So I'm going to go back into my color mix so it's the same as I did before and pull that leaf in. You'll see it better once we get some highlights on it. To do the S-stroke leaves, which are here, I actually loaded in my green and tried to get my brush as flat as I could. I'm going to move my palette here for a second. Wow, this brush is as flat as I can get it, and that's why it's important to pull it from the side of the puddle and press down. I'm going to pick up a little bit of yellow on a corner of that brush. I'm just going to swipe it back and forth one, maybe two times to kind of blend it a little bit. I want the yellow on the top of these strokes. So again, chisel edge, press through, get up on the chisel edge. I didn't quite fill in my pattern, not a big deal. Once it's dry, I'll take the pattern off, nobody will ever know. And again, I went away from myself because the end of my stroke is curving to the left. So now to do the other side, I'm going to turn my surface over. And since it's such a narrow area, I am reloading my brush, picking up a little bit more yellow on the corner and reblending. Again, chisel edge, press through. and chisel edge, releasing pressure. So again, I'm pulling toward myself because as this leaf finishes up, it's kind of curving off. It's not curving to the right, it's curving off more to the left. If you're left-handed, you're probably gonna reverse this process. You wanna pull your strokes so that they end up toward your right instead of your left. Okay, so we're going to come back over here now and start adding our highlights to our um, leaves over here. I didn't add any highlight on my first stroke here, so I'm going to do that right now. I'm just going to reload my brush in my green, pick up the yellow on the corner, blend, blend. I'm just going to come over here and do this one side so you can see rather than flip my piece over again. I think you can figure out how to do that on your own. So again, my yellow is toward the top of the stroke. Oh, I forgot to mention, you want to put your stem in with a liner brush and that same green mix. Okay, then for my highlights on my other leaves, I'm going in with a flat brush. I'm going to add some yellow highlight to it, but I don't want it to scream at me. So what I do, and since my brush is quite a bit bigger than the surface that I'm going to be working on, I'm going to side load into my green mix. So I have that color in my brush. I'm going to blend on my palette, just like always. Blend, blend till it goes from dark to medium to light to nothing. Then I'm going to, on the same corner of the brush, I'm picking up yellow. And I'm going to come here and blend on top of what I just did. So that's just going to lighten my green up a little bit. It's not going to scream yellow when I put my colors down. And that's why I did that on the S stroke. So I'm keeping the yellow to the top of the piece. Flat pressure release pressure. I'm going to pick up, again, since this yellow is a little transparent, picking up just a little more in my brush. And I'm going to come down here onto this little leaf and I'm going to add that on what I consider the top side of the brush, or the leaf. I already have that done here on, on these areas. Oh, one thing, another thing I forgot to mention to you, Let's scoot back up here to this, this um, design here. There's this little area above this center. Mm, 
bud that we're calling. And I decided to do that in green, so I'm just using my liner. Again, I'm loading into my green paint. And one more, and I'm loading flat from the side of the puddle. And one more time, we're gonna think C stroke. So I'm gonna start this here on the side of this bud. I'm going to press as I come across the top and then release pressure as I come around to the side. So this is kind of a C shape that I have here. Also on the, the pattern, the line drawing, there were these little vertical lines in here. Not sure what they're supposed to be, but since there wasn't any other decoration on here, I decided to add them in just for a little bit more interest. So even though this area is not 100% done. I'm just going to show you that again with my liner. I picked up green and I just did some vertical lines in here. A longer one in the center and two shorter ones. And then again to kind of mimic it, do a symmetrical design here. Yeah, that's a little better. I think you can see it. Again, a lot of moisture on that wet palette. It's thinning my paint way down. So that, that's what I did after I had all the highlighting done on this piece. So let's get, come back down here to um, my first area that I did with the yellow. So as I said, I'm picking up a little more yellow in my brush and blending it out. I'm going to add just a tad more yellow to both leaves. And if you need to, if you want to brighten them up and you're just going in with yellow, you can add that to your S-stroke leaves as well. You want to do that on this one too. Let's come down this way. I love this yellow. It just makes this whole area glow. And then we put this green um, line here above this, this bud. Again, I'm going to just pick up a tiny bit more yellow in my brush that's mixed with the green. I'm going to start in the center of the line, like the widest area, and I'm walking that color out to the side. Again, I'm flipping the brush over, laying it right down where I started, and moving this direction. So it's brightest in the very center, and then fades out as you get to the outside edges. And then you can see here, add a little yellow to this one you can see how that just really helps to brighten it up really pretty again helps to make all those areas glow okay let's come back now and start adding we've got all the base coating done we have all the highlighting done so we're going to come back in here and start adding some shadow on my orange areas to do the shadow, I started with chestnut, which is a real pretty, kind of a reddish, light reddish brown color. So again, side load and blend. And I'm doing that, well, let's come down here. I'm going to do that on the bottom of this oval. And I'm going to move that color up toward the center, not all the way into the center. Again, about a third of the way up. And then for my second coat, I'm going to keep that chestnut in my brush, side load and blend. I'm going to pick up a little bit of brick on the same corner of the brush and blend that together. Then I'm going to come here to my green mix. Pick up some of that on the same corner of the brush and blend all three colors together. Now again, this is why I like doing it this way. I can kind of judge it. Do I like this color? Is it too green? Is it too red? Maybe I want to add a little more red. Maybe I want to add a little more chestnut. That's entirely up to you. Right now, I'm pretty happy with this color, so I'm going to go with it. And again, this was a mix of chestnut, 
brick and my green mix. I'm going to come here to, again, the bottom of my little center bud. And I'm going to deepen that shadow just a little bit. You can see how pretty that looks, deepening that up. We have a couple things to do. Well, yeah, we have a couple things to do to this center um, petal here, so we'll, we'll come back to that in a little bit. One thing I should mention, too, while I'm looking at it, you want to use, uh, put a dot here at the very base of your tulip where it meets the stem, and you're going to use the same color mix as you did for the center tulip petal. Okay, I'm going to clean my brush. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to start adding some shading to my um, petals here, side petals. So I'm going to this time use my red mix, which is my base color, and blend that out. I'm going to pick up a little bit of green on the same corner of the brush and blend. You know red and, and green make brown, so this is just going to give you a little darker reddish brown. And I'm putting that on the bottom of my center petals, or I'm sorry, my side petals. And again, I'm walking that color up. I don't want just a line at the very bottom. I'm walking that color up. Then to make it just a teeny bit darker, I'm picking up a tiny bit more green on the same corner of my brush, and I'm going to blend that into it. And again, I'm going to look and decide, do I like it that color? Is it too green, too red? I think I like it, but I'm going to come over here. This was my first shading on, on my side petal. Let's see. Yeah, I think I like it. It's going to add, just deepen it up just a tiny bit more. Okay, then to do the shading on the leaves, all we're going to do... Um, I'm using a little smaller flat brush. I'm picking up a corner of the green, blending. And then on the same corner, I'm picking up some a little black and blending that into it. I think that's... I'm going to pick up just a tiny bit more black just so you can see it a little bit better and blend it in. And then again, this color is coming along the bottom edge of this leaf here. This little leaf here. And I'm actually just kind of touching it to the side edges of this green line that comes over the center part of the, the bud. I didn't add any shading to the S-stroke leaves, but you certainly are welcome to do that. Um, okay, so I think we're good on that. Um, let's come down here to these little lines that we put in on the center, but I forgot to mention before while I had the mix in my brush, that's done with your mix of the side-loaded green and a little bit of yellow or maybe a lot of yellow in your brush. And that color is going on the top part of those areas. And then when that's dry, then you're going to come back and add a little bit more yellow to brighten it up. And then I did the dark color. I'm not going to waste your time doing it, but I touched the bottoms of these. You can see it better on my finished piece. You can see a little extra yellow there to help it glow. And then a little bit of the dark mix to do the bottom part here. You can also add the um, green with a little black to do a center vein in those um, two side leaves. Let's come back here. I told you there's a little bit of detail work to do. Um, I added a little bit of cross hatching and some comma strokes to these petals. You don't have to do that. If you like the way it looks the way it is, that's fine. A couple things, though, I think the 
um, red and the orange kind of blend together here so this helps differentiate those two petals and also if you have any funny edges on on the tops of your side petals those comma strokes are going to help to clean that up so what I did was I made another mix over here and that mix is um, two parts of white to one part of chestnut to about a quarter yellow. I wanted to cream it up a little bit. So to do my cross hatching, using my zero liner, and you know when you're doing lines, you need a little extra water in your paint and brush. Although again, being on the wet palette, it's really wet, so I'm just tipping my brush on my paper towel. I like to use the curve of these side petals as my guide, so I'm just gonna put my brush here and kind of go with the shape of that petal. And I just kind of eye it in. And then coming the opposite direction, again, using that petal as my guide. And I'm going to pull in some lines. We'll do those comma strokes in a minute, but I want to come back down um, to... Um, the shading, I pull the shading on that area, or I'm sorry, the lines on that area before I do the shading. So that's what I have done here. And then we're going to go in and do the same shading that we did on that, um, scent, or the, um, the bud. So I'm going to go in with some chestnut, blend that out. Pick up a little bit of red and blend that out and pick up some of the green on the same corner again. Blend that out. And then I'm going to shade the bottom of that center petal and this is going to help set those crosshatch lines in. Otherwise they would be screaming at you if you didn't set them in with some shading. And that just goes in this little V area here of the center petal. Also using that same color to add a little shading to the bottom of that dot that I put there. Just make sure your dot is 100% dry or it's going to lift that right up. Then to do the side petals on that tulip, I actually used a number three Joe Sonia number 1360 short liner on my original. I'm going to use a larger brush here just because I'm working on a little bit bigger area. And I'm going to use that same color mix that I did for the crosshatch lines. I'm loading the whole brush, pressing down. So I'm loading all the bristles, not just the ones on the outside. I'm going to gently blot it on my paper towel again and just get the excess out. Again, this is going to help clean up any kind of rough edges that you have on, on these petals. So I'm starting a little bit outside the edge, pressing, and as I pull through, I'm releasing pressure. On this side, again, I need to turn my surface. I'm going to press down, pull through, and release pressure. Just a couple more things to do on this um, center bud. Or this little oval under the center uh, bud. On the original pattern, it showed little dots on there. I'm not sure what they did, but what I did was I took my liner and loaded it in brick. I came back here and added a few red dots in here. And then picked up a little bit of green, put it here on my palette. I'm going to pick up mm, quite a bit of yellow because I want these to really show. I'm mixing that yellow in with my green, so I've got a real pale yellow green. And I'm going to add a few of those dots in here. Actually, I could probably pick up a little bit more yellow because I want them to show up a tiny bit more. There we go. And that just goes on that little oval underneath that bud. Two more quick things I want to show you. 
<clears throat> I did a little border on the outside edge of my piece. I did an S, kind of a connected S stroke with the green and then uh, just a thin line with my red mix. And when I say green, I mean my green mix of the yellow and the black. So again, on, on the smaller one, on this, the, my sample piece, I used the, that number three short touch liner. I'm going to move to something a little larger here. And actually, I'm going to go in with this lighter mix. Um, I use the, the green, but I'm going to do this because I think it's going to show up better on my background here for you. So I have my brush loaded, and I'm loading it flat from the side of the puddle again. And again, to pull an S stroke, you want to go chisel edge, little pressure, press through, lift up on the chisel edge, and then I use the chisel edge and pull a straight line up. And I'm going to start here again, chisel edge, press through, release pressure, use the chisel edge for that that line. Let's do them a little smaller. This is a little more like what I did on my glasses case. I'm running out of paint a little bit here, so I'm dragging a titch. Press through. Again, chisel edge to pull that line up. And that's connecting your strokes. If you don't pull that line up, and that's fine, you can do whatever you want, this is your piece, but if you don't pull that little line up, you end up with something that looks more like a ribbon, which is fine too. And then again, the last thing was the line around the outside edge, and that was done with my red, and again, you know, a little extra water in my paint to do that. Make sure you anchor your finger down so your hand doesn't wiggle around. And I just pulled it right along the outside edge of that case. Again, these are all the Deco Art Stylant paints. I just gave you the colors because they are just basic colors. Yellow is yellow. Orange is called orange. And these are the colors that they use, um, the color names that they use for the Stylant paints. So I hope you enjoyed painting that. If you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear them. And you can contact me at bbunsey at calicogoose.com. Thanks a lot for listening. Thanks a lot for painting with me. And have a great day.